Welcome to Lecture 4, which is on utilitarian reasoning and how to calculate consequences in our picture of uh, ethical reasoning. Just let me remind you where we are. We are studying an assortment of different ethical theories because the, what we're trying to do is bring to bear the insights of different ethical approaches when we consider an ethical problem or situation that we have to figure out what to do. Our natural reaction when we have an ethical problem is just to go with our gut. We have a, <clears throat> a reaction that says this is unfair or this is, this is uh, wrong in some way. We just, our gut tells us what to do. Well, sometimes your gut may not be right. And what I would like you to, to teach you is for it to slow down Think through the problem from the point of view of, a of several different ways of um, doing ethical reasoning and bring that together to make a better decision, a d slower deliberative decision, not a sort of snap judgment that you make from um, uh, just going with your gut. Okay, so we've had different types of ethical theories. There were the character-based and care-based ethical theories. There were um, principle-based ethical theories that talk about rights and justice and so on. And the consequences. Uh, when we look at the outcome of a decision, we evaluate those consequences. We can evaluate them for ourselves, which is ethical egoism, and we looked at some of the problems with ethical egoism in the last chapter. And we can look at them more generally, which is the utilitarian approach that I'm going to go through today. The utilitarian approach has several different parts that we're going to look at. There are several different ways that you can think about um, utility. Remember, a utilitarian approach says to ma cause the maximum amount of happiness. Well, what's happiness? Well, maybe it's pleasure. We'll look at the sensation-based theories here. Or maybe it's getting what you want, the preference-based satisfaction-based theories here. And that satisfying preferences leads us into an economic way of thinking, which we'll, we'll look at also. Okay, so we have various types of consequence-based eth ethical theories. The objective type of consequentialism tells you to look at the states of the world, from which you can observe from an objective point of view, and make the decisions which lead to the best states of the world. Lead to, cause, consequences, the best states of the world. <clears throat> Utilitarian consequentialism, subjective as opposed to objective, requires agents to make the decisions which, ma ma which ma cause maximum positive mental states, like happiness or um, pleasure or pr satisfied preferences in themselves and others. These contrast with ethical egoism, which we looked at in the last chapter, which asks agents to maximize the men positive mental states or self-interest in themselves only, egoism themselves. Okay, And finally, altruism, which is sort of, as it were, the uh, contrary of ethical egoism, which requires agents to maximize those mental states in other people, worry about others and not about yourself at all. The difference is that the utilitarian not only thinks about others, but counts themselves as well. The ethical egoism, egoist counts themselves only, the altruist counts others, and the utilitarian counts everybody. So, here's a rough definition of utilitarianism. A decision is the right one if and only if it causes Okay, that's what makes utilitarianism consequentialist. And it causes something which we will call utility, which, well, we'll look at different way, meanings for utility. Utility was Bentham's original term, and it meant usefulness. Usefulness uh, largely for the idea of happiness. But we'll, we'll talk about how happiness might be, might be thought of. Okay, so if you're going to cause this, <clears throat> and you want it to be the best decision, you want to cause, even if happiness is a good thing, well, you want to cause as much of it as possible. So you cause the maximum amount of happiness. And this is a key aspect of utilitarianism. You don't just, you, when you do this calculation of what is the maximum happiness, you aggregate everybody together. Everybody's happiness is added up. Okay, not just yours, not just uh, other people's, yours and other people's. But you're concerned not with people themselves, and this is a key thing. You're concerned with the amount of happiness that you bring about. The amount of mental states are what are intrinsically valuable. Happiness is the best mental state, and you want to cause the, amount, the total amount of the best amount, largest amount of happiness that you possibly can. Okay? So 
here's a little uh, quiz for you. Uh, use the table below to answer the following questions. Just pause the video for a moment, and um, if Hal is an altruist, here's, Hal can make three possible decisions, A, B, and C. Um, pick out the one where he's an altruist, the one where he's acting as an ethical egoist, and the one where he's acting as a utilitarian. Okay, so pause the video for a second and um, think about this. <clears throat> okay, welcome back. Hell has, faces three possible uh, decision outcomes that he can have. He can do, he can do A and it'll produce um, 65 units of happiness. If he, do, he, produce, he does B, 75, and C, 80. Okay, the question is, if Hell is an altruist, which decision will he make? Well, you'll recall that an altruist is somebody who thinks uh, only about others. He will look for the decision that makes the maximum aggregate amount of happiness for other people besides himself. And in this case, it's the, it's the one that causes the least happiness for him, but 25 for iron, which is the largest here, and 40 for jam. Okay, so he adds up the happiness, but in this case he only considers jam and ira, sorry, ira and jam, and he adds them up. The 65 is higher than 35, it's higher than 55, so um, this is number one. Okay. Um, if Hal's an ethical egoist, which decision will he make? Well, that's, that's, re that's easy. Just look down Hal's column, see which of these decisions will maximize happiness for Hal. It's this one here, 30, because it's bigger than 10 and 25. So the at number two, this would be number two. And, well, you can guess which is left over, but if Hell's a utilitarian, then what he has to do is to look at the aggregate, not any individual people, but the aggregate of everybody's happiness. And so he's in this column here. He has to look in this column here, and he looks to see which of these numbers is highest. And it's this one. So decision C produces, in our little model here, the maximum amount of, sorry, try again, the maximum amount of happiness. That's the utilitarian viewpoint here. If he's a utilitarian, he's a number three. And it's because the aggregate is the highest. Again, here's just a, a way of representing what's going on here. We've got Hal. He has three decisions to make. He looks at what the decisions are going to cause. Okay, that's why he's a consequentialist. And he looks at the happiness for everybody, all three people that his decision affects. He looks for the one that maximizes happiness, and therefore he does this. Okay? Sorry. So Hell, as a utilitarian, he's going to do decision C. The utilitarian is an attractive doctrine. It, um, in the sen in sense, it seems fair in a way because everybody, it, um, when it adds up the uh, everybody's interest to see who what to do, everybody's utility is weighted by the same factor. Let's say one, each to count for one, and none to count for more than one. So in that sense, it's fair. That's one argument for utilitarianism. It also seems to. Um, um, suggests the possibility of a decision in almost every case, which is attractive too, because you just do basically a cost-benefit analysis where you measure utility in, well, we'll talk about how you measure utility, that's going to be a, a little bit of an issue, but, and you look to see which one has the highest number, and that's the one you do. So you're counting everybody equally, and you may get a decision in every case. So it does seem it's an attractive, it's an attractive doctrine, if um, that sort of equality is a good thing, and if uh, you can actually measure things in such a way that you can do the proper cost-benefit analysis. All right, so I'll see you in a minute.